class because here is a big party, San Juan in Catalonia, so we are not <laughs> working. And I, I, I imagine that you are willing to go to Girona, no? to, do, to know each other and, and to begin the work in, in Girona. But today we have uh, two super interesting presentations. Uh, thank you very much, Felix and Robert. The first presentation, they are uh, super experts of the Elicit Net project. And uh, Felix, the first presentation, the first speaker, uh, he will talk about how integrate nature-based solution in buildings, a very practical thing for, for your study of next week. And then uh, Robert for all, sorry, uh, it's very difficult for me, Princess in the Garden Collective. They will explain about the social and more social and cultural aspects of nature-based solution for food production. So thank you very much. Uh, I hope you enjoy a lot. So, and then, sorry, then at the end of these two seminars, we will go off like yesterday in three break, breakout rooms and we will finish our problem-based learning. And then uh, please don't go, uh, return to the main room because Marta, they want to talk about logistical aspects for the Girona trip, okay? So please, Felix, um, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you too, Antonina. Thank you for the invitation that I'm happy to be here uh, and to present here yeah, my topic on building greening a bit more. Topic of this presentation is making cities green and edible, integrating nature-based solutions in building projects. Yeah, my name is Felix Moinhauer. I'm working for the German Association when it comes to building greening. So it's the BUGG in Germany, Bundesverband Gebäude Grün. Okay, the content for this presentation. First of all, I want to introduce ourselves a bit more. Who and what is the BUGG? What are we doing directly? Um, after that, I will go on with the benefits of building greening. And then we will have a look on the details of, of green roofs and how to implement them. And the same after that for green facades. And to end uh, the presentation, I will give you an overview on how we implement in Germany um, edible city solutions on buildings, so ECS. First of all, yes, you can see it on the, on the picture here. Uh, our main aim is to have more greenery on buildings, uh, especially in Germany, since we are the German association. And um, yeah, we were founded in May 2018. As you can see, we are a pretty new association, but we had two associations before our time, which made a fusion in May 2018, so that there's only one um, association in Germany which uh, focuses on this topic. Our headquarter is in Berlin, but our office is in Saarbrücken, which is in the west of Germany. Um, yeah, but um, most of our colleagues are working from different places in Germany. So for myself, for example, I'm working from Dresden, which is around two hours south of Berlin. Uh, industry, of course, roof greening, facade greening, and interior greening topics. So um, we have three main aims we are working on. First of all is inform and educate to hand out brochures, technical information on how to implement uh, building greening. We give symposia or presentations such as today. Uh, and of course, we inform also on our website, gebäudegrün.info. Uh, it's pretty at the moment, most of the website is in German. Uh, we hope that in the upcoming months, uh, the most informations are also in English there as well. But please feel free to have a look if you're interested. Networking is another big uh, part of our work. So we are network manager for cities and universities and to bring together the industry together with planners and cities um, everyone who's interested in building greening. And so our members are, of course, from the industry sector, which means green roof industry, facade greening and interior greening topics, but also planners and contractors and uh, cities which are interested in building greening. We have uni universities in our membership and also private individuals or students which are interested. And the last point is, of course, uh, promote and research. So we are supporting and research projects 
We are supporting also students with their work. And um, yeah, we are also involved in the ATB uh, City Network, for, exa uh, for example, um, which is a big project when it comes to um, ATB City solutions. Here you can see our team. Uh, on the left side is me. So my main focus is on constru construction technology for green roofs and facades and how to implement them. And I'm also the contact person uh, in the AD SIDNET project. And so we are partner there, the BUGG, so, and I'm the contact person. You, you can have a short overlook on the different systems we are having when it comes to building greening to the most interesting. I will tell you something later on when it comes to green roofs and green facades. But as you can see, number 12 interior greening is also a big topic when it comes to our work. Uh, to have a first look uh, on the different systems of green roofs, you can see here we have uh, mainly two differences. This means extensive and intensive green roofs. What this means, I will tell you later. And uh, for facades, also there exists a lot of different systems. These are all, all um, um, examples from Germany. So we are installing a lot. And to have the chaos complete, there's also a lot to do when it comes to interior greening. Um, yeah, and then not directly topics we are working on, but be, uh, that belongs to us are some other types of greening structures. This means green noise barriers, for example, uh, like on the left bottom. Um, um, this means that we have some green facade systems which are directly connected with green noise barriers. So the, that's their main aim. We have ray track greening, which is very important, especially in, especially in cities where green spaces are really uh, less. And yeah, wall greening, that's a bit of a difference to typical facade greenings, but we are working on this as well. Good, that's for us who we are. And now we will go on with the benefits of building greening. Uh, in the background, you have a great example of what is possible with uh, building greening with green roofs and green facades. This is an object which is located in the city of Stuttgart, Volksbank Stuttgart. Um, there are a lot of different um, <clears throat> green roof and green facade systems installed. As you can see here, you have a green roof garden, you have solar green roofs, you have extensive green roofs and uh, also green facades with climbers, so a lot of different systems, just to have a look. Yeah, but if you look on the typical side of a city, uh, I think uh, Robert knows what I mean because he's located in Berlin. Uh, the spaces with green are pretty less, so we have to look for some ways to have more greenery in inner cities or in industry and uh, areas. And so uh, green roofs and green facades can be a possible way. And within these solutions comes a lot of benefits. We will start with fluid prevention. We have heat precaution. We have also reduction of carbon dioxide emissions, preservation of biodiversity. We have other well-being aspects which are coming with building greening and also cost savings and profit can be a benefit. And to divine this for flu prevention, we have then rainwater retention. So a lot of rainwater can be held back on green roofs. For example, we have special green roofs in Germany, which are called retention roofs. We can hold back all the rainwater, which comes directly on the roof with this kind of system. And with that, we have also reduction of peak flows. Uh, so this can prevent floods, for example. We have cooling effects through evaporation. Uh, in Germany, the evaporation rate is at, for a typical extensive green roof, this means centi 10 centimeters in high are around two liters per day. We have heat and cold protection. This means uh, in summer, uh, it's much cooler inside the building when you have green facades and green roofs. And in winter, you don't have to heat that much because um, you have like a second skin with, uh, with the greenery. 
And with that uh, carbon dioxide storage and sink, I already, already told you, we have an increased yield of photovoltaics when you combine um, green roofs with uh, PV panels, then the evaporation cools the, the PV panels a bit so that you can have a bit more of energy with, uh, with the photovoltaic system. And we have ecological compensation when it comes to flora and fauna, binding dust and pollutants, noise protection can be really important, especially in inner cities. Improvement of living environment, uh, green is always great, and uh, additional living space, especially when, when we have um, uh, rooftop gardens, then we have an additional space up there. Protection of the building envelope because the uh, greenery is like a second skin, so it prevents the uh, first skin, the typical uh, facade or a typical roof uh, from, from some damage. And with this, with this, you can save some money. And because uh, the project at the SIDNET focuses especially on edible solutions, we can have this with uh, building greening as well, especially on, 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 on green roofs. With that, we have a reduced environmental impact. We can have a plant protection. Uh, we can have social cohesion and participation. Environmental education could be a really good factor. A social meeting place uh, or a retreat and resting place can be can be possible on green roofs. We have health and well-being, and view can also be a benefit if you have an overlook over the city or over the environment. This can also benefit um, creation of jobs if it's in bigger installation. Uh, local food production, production, of course, with short transport routes, which is very important in, in cities. Uh, and, and healthy food production when we are um, taking care on it for ourselves. And we can also develop uh, innovative techniques. Um, so this can be all positive effects when it comes to only building greening, especially in connection with, uh, with edible city solutions. So that's a lot. Um, we just have to install it. Good, that's it for the benefits. Now I would like to go on with details on green roofs and what types of green roofs we have in Germany, especially, or maybe also in, in other countries, but we call it like that. So first of all, we have the extensive green roofs. You can see it here on top of the buildings. Um, they don't need um, really high maintenance. This is why they are called extensive green roofs. Really often they are also not open for the public. And so, yeah, they are often used on this upper uh, side of buildings. And then we have intensive green roof, as you can see here in the background, for example, that's the two typical rooftop garden or here in the inside of the building. Uh, it's also an intensive green roof and they are often open for public usage. And with, when you want to combine with, uh, with other uh, kinds of solutions like solar usage, then it's the so-called solar green roof, as you can see here on the left side. I will tell you something later more. Okay, how is the structure of a green roof? Uh, first of all, what is needed is a suitable roof structure. This has to hold the whole weight of the green roof system itself. Um, and this can be really high, so you need the right statics for that. After that, you have a uh, special roof waterproofing, which protects against water and of course the roots of the plants. So it's a bit different to uh, ungreened uh, green, uh, roofs. Um, so need, you need special roof waterproofing. And then comes the first layer of the green roof itself. That's the protective layer. And this one protects the water roof waterproofing from mechanical damage. Yeah, by, uh, for example, from the substrate you're using. After that, for a typical multi-layer green roof, 90% of the green roofs you're using in Germany are multi-layer green roofs. You have a drainage layer. Uh, this can be consists of plastic as in solid drainage or bulk materials such as lava, for example. You can see it here on the right side uh, again. It don't have to be both, so just one of it. Um, 
After that, you have a filter fleece, which uh, prevents the finer particles from being washed into the drainage. So this one is uh, between the drainage layer and the substrate layer where the plants can grow into. Yeah, and uh, depending on the green roof you have, you have the substrate and, uh, and the highness of the substrate. Uh, depends on what kind of plants you want to grow there. We will start with the typical extensive green roof in medium construction. Uh, these, this construction is often used on already existing buildings because its weight is not that high. It's between 90 and 110 kilograms per square meter. Uh, so the most, mo most of the already existing buildings can hold that weight. Uh, vegetation is not pretty high, so you can only have a few plants there, sedum, herbs, and moss uh, vegetation, but uh, yeah, it's better than no vegetation, so why don't use it? And effects, what we have with this uh, solution is in water retention, it's already at 50%. So 50% of the rainwater, which is coming down on, on this uh, green roof, uh, can be held back with uh, this type of system. Um, yeah, usage almost everywhere. It's also pretty good. Maintenance is very low, so one to two times a, a year you have to go over the uh, green roof to maintain it. And we have the extensive green roof in a high layer construction. This one is typical when it comes to newer buildings. Construction high is at uh, approximately 12 to 15 centimeters, so up to 190 kilograms per square meter. And you can see it on the picture, you have a greater variety of plants you can use here. So herbs, grass, sedum uh, are all possible. Maintenance is a bit higher than on the, on the medium level. Um, construction, but uh, not that much. And water retention is already at 17%. So water reservoir at 35 liters per square meter. You have a high evaporation capacity with this uh, kind of solution and also in high biodiversity. And here you can see the difference between these two types of extensive green roofs. So on the upper levels, you see the medium layer construction only a few centimeters of substrate, and so not that much plants you can use here. And on the uh, lower level, you have this uh, higher, um, higher extensive green roof with a greater variety of plants. And then we have some special uh, solution when it comes to extensive green roof. I want to start with the biodiversity green roof. Uh, as the name said, it's uh, to increase the biodiversity of, of green roofs itself. Um, so the construction height is between 10 and 30 centimeters. Uh, you need a pretty high statics uh, uh, for this type of solution, so up to 350 kilograms. Vegetation is herbs, grass, and sedum. And in the areas where you have this high, higher substrate rate, you can also use uh, some shrubs. Uh, maintenance is a bit higher than on, on typical extensive green roofs, but you have, of course, a higher evaporation capacity and high biodiversity um, because there's also some special modules uh, on, on this green roof, like that wood or uh, some stones you can lay on or gravel paths, some water areas, um, just to increase the biodiversity structures on the roof itself. And what is uh, known also, or what should be known also, is um, that it's only usable on flat roofs, so not on pitched roofs. And the same is for the solar green roof, also only used on uh, on flat roofs up to five degrees. And the construction height is here between eight and 10 centimeters. Um, and these are, this shouldn't be higher because uh, there shouldn't be plants which can go uh, higher than 20 to 30 centimeters because uh, the uh, plants result in a shadowing and um, they shouldn't overshadow the, the PB panels. You can see here, that's typical for this kind of solution. There is some distance between the substrate or the vegetation and the PB panel itself. These are between 20 and 30 centimeters just to, to avoid the shadowing via the plants. Because uh, if, the, if, if there's shadowing on the, on the PB panels, then the whole solar system is uh, making lesser energy. 
Um, yeah, on the website for the summer school, I guess there is also a brochure from us when uh, to where there is a bigger description on, the, on this kind of solution. So please feel free to have a look. It's also in English. Um, if you want to know much more on, on this type of solution, you can always ask me. We have another brochure which is bigger, but it costs something. So uh, please feel free feel free to ask me. Here are just some other examples on this type of solution. So we can have really big buildings or smaller buildings. It's also possible in private sectors. Um, just make sure to use the right uh, combination with this distance between the substrate layer and uh, the PV panels. And then we have the pitched roof. Uh, we can also um, have a green roofs there. It's also always uh, extensive green roofs. There are just a few examples in Europe where we have intensive green roofs on pitch roofs. Um, but normally we have these extensive green roofs with uh, 10 centimeters in high. And we can only use it uh, on up to 45 degrees of, uh, of the roof angle. Yeah, but it's also possible to have this kind of solution. It's a bit more expensive than on flat, flat roofs and it's bit more complicated when it comes to the installation and maintenance of, of the green roof, but uh, as you can see, it's still possible to green even pitched roofs. And from the extensive green roofs, we go now on to the intensive green roofs, so to the classic rooftop garden uh, construction high begins at 14 centimeters and can go up to 100 or 200 centimeters, always depends on what kind of plants you want to create there. If you have bigger trees, of course, you need the substrate high for this. Vegetation, like in your own garden, you can have perennials, shrubs, and lawns. Maintenance is, of course, really high, but the water retention also, you have 90% of the rainwater can, can be held back with this kind of solution because we have a water reservoir at around 150 liters per square meter. And another big effect with this kind of green roof is, of course, that we have an additional usable and living space. So here's another uh, interesting object. Um, this one is in Berlin as well, um, especially Berlin and uh, Munich, I guess, uh, installing this kind of uh, buildings really often when it comes to newer buildings, um, they want to have the inhabitants of the building of the building and, and give them an, an, an a separate space to, to go on to, to use also the flat roof as, as, as in garden for the inhabitants. But here in the background, you can see another solar green roof. So the bigger building, uh, cities in Germany uh, are doing really much when it comes to green roof technologies. We have also, um, because uh, when it comes to the edible usage, we have the urban farming roof, which is also, of course, an intensive green roof. Construction high begins at 25 centimeters over the roof water proving. You can see it here in detail a bit more. Uh, always depends on what kind of crops you want to grow there. Um, so the way starts also at 300 kilograms per square meter, vegetation, everything you want, fruit, vegetables, litouge, kitchen herbs, everything is possible, you just need the space for it. It's not always, uh, especially on ex already existing buildings, it's not always possible to, to have this kind of solution there, but um, maybe on newer buildings, uh, when, you, when the uh, city is open for that kind of solution. Okay, what is needed to install your uh, green roof? What do you have to plan? First of all, you have to figure out the utilization. Of course, you should know what you want to have with your green roof. Should it be more an uh, excessive green roof, maybe with biodiversity, or do you want to use it yourself? So this should be clear. Then the statics have to be checked out, especially on already existing buildings. Root protection is another big point that you need the special roof waterproofing. Um, roof pitch and slope, I already told you, both is possible. Um, just have to be calculated from the beginning. Then the roof construction is not that interesting because every roof construction can be greened one or the other way. Um, this just has to be known beforehand. 
And um, yeah, drainage has to be checked. Uh, irrigation, of course, is another big point. Uh, typical for extensive green roofs is that you don't need a uh, separate uh, or an automatic uh, irrigation. But for intensive green roofs, of course, you need one. Um, protection against drift could be possible, uh, could, uh, has to be calculated, especially on buildings which are pretty high or which are in an open space where it's pretty windy, then uh, these ones should be calculated um, so that it's protected against wind. Uh, maybe there will be um, some special products needed. Fire protection is not a big point because in Germany, uh, um, a green roof is fire protected, uh, doesn't matter which type of green roof it's, it is. Um, the combination with other systems has to be checked out, like solar usage or grey water usage, everything is possible. Uh, this just has to be clear from the beginning. Uh, falling protection depends a bit on the, on the green roof type itself. There are different kinds of falling protections. And last but not least, uh, just make sure that you have the right access to the, to the green roof, of this can be inside from the building or outside the building via a ladder, um, but uh, yeah, this has to be there. And if this every uh, if everything is clear, then you can install your great green roofs. Here's another great example uh, with a rooftop garden and bigger. And on the upper levels, there is a typical biodiversity green roof. So a lot of things are possible there. And now let's go on, on with the right side of this picture. We will now focus on the details of uh, green facades. And here on this picture, you can see two types of green facades. You can see a uh, ground bound facade greening on the left and wall bound facade greening on the right. So these ground bound facade greenings, um, I guess they are better known as this typical climbers but we are making their separations as well. And we have these newer systems, the wall-bound facade queen. So we are doing here differentiation when it comes to ground-bound facade greening. Um, we have self-climbing plants and we have scaffold climbers. And for wall-bound facade greening, we are differentiate in horizontal and vertical greening. Uh, let's have a detailed look on the different uh, systems. Uh, first of all, the self-climbing plants, um, these ones are, I guess, the most often used uh, uh, facade greening plants, uh, especially in, in Germany, maybe in other countries as well. So because they are pretty easy to use, uh, um, I guess the most known plants are EV and maybe Patinocystis. You can see it here on the picture as well. So the EV uh, is an evergreen plant. So make sure uh, that this is uh, also green in winter and the Patinocissus uh, is a summer green plant. So it has, has a different look over the year, but uh, there is no greenery in, the, in winter. And um, the problem with these plants are that, first of all, they get really big. For example, EV gets up to 500 uh, square meter, one plant. And uh, so it shouldn't be installed on your single family home, for, for example, because then the maintenance is pretty high. You have to cut, have to cut it back every few months. This should be avoided. Uh, so make sure to use then another plant uh, for your single family home. And the other problem is um, that their growth organs, um, they like to grow uh, negatively phototrope. This means the growth organs like to grow against the light. And um, that's a big of an issue when you have a facade construction with has joints or, or holes or other things where the plant can grow inside. And if the plant uh, plants grow inside, then it can destroy the whole facade. Yeah, so make sure that uh, the walls are without joints or, or other things like this concrete well, there's, it's absolutely no problem to use these kind of plants. And we have the scaffolding uh, climbers. So these types of uh, climbers need a separate climbing aid to climb uh, on top. So they can't directly hold on the wall. 
And uh, yeah, maintenance is a bit higher than on, on, on self climbers because you want to also have an optical effect, but especially effects which come within these types of uh, uh, facade greening are, of course, evaporation capacity is pretty high, biodiversity is pretty high. You can see it on the picture. You can also combine different scaffolding climbers with each other. That's not possible with, um, with self climbing plants. And uh, another big uh, uh, effect is or advantage is that you can use this type of greenery on almost every facade construction. So also on already existing uh, buildings, some kind of uh, greenery is, uh, is possible with this kind of solution. So this, is a, this is a big advantage. Yeah, and uh, when it comes to the growth uh, characteristic, we make differentiation again. So for self-climbing plants, we have uh, root climbers and we have adhesive disc climbers. Um, perfect example for root climbers is ivy. You can see it here. It forms this kind of roots on its, uh, its show, uh, shoot um, with it, it, its hold direct, directly on the, on the wall and climbs on top. And the Virginia creeper or Paradisus, for example, um, these ones forms these uh, disc-like uh, organs, which look a bit like uh, some frog feet, and with them they hold directly on the wall. And the scaffolding climbers, we are differentiating in looping and winding plants. You can see it here. The these kind of plants prefer uh, vertical climbing structures and climb directly or winding directly on this climbing at on top. Example here is a Visterias. And we have climbing plants, the typicals, which are forming shoots, leaf or petioles with which they hold on the climbing at and climb so on top of the building. And last but not least, we have the straddle climbing plants, which are often used in uh, private gardening. And these ones prefer especially horizontal lines uh, with it, uh, with one, their hold there. Here you can see an overview from spring to winter. As you can see, uh, scaffolding climbers, most of it we are, we are having in Germany are summer green. I guess we only have two or three plants which are in evergreen, uh, evergreen plants. Um, so the most of it don't have any leaves in winter, but this hasn't, uh, don't have to be bad. Uh, you just have to know it. And yeah, so if you want to install this kind of solution, you just have to make sure that you use the right plant with the right um, climbing aid and the right ball construction to so that you have the right combination with each other. And then you can have beautiful green buildings. And then we have the wall bound facade greening. At last, uh, horizontal greening and vertical greening. First of all, the horizontal greening, um, which are structured that it's horizontal containers, which are over and on each other placed. They can be directly contacted with the wall, or if the wall can't hold the, uh, the really big uh, weight, then it can be also in separate structure. Um, these ones can be combined with climbing aids or without. It always depends on what kind of uh, vegetation you want to have. You can have wet perennials, small shrubs, or climbers. Um, just use the right system then. And maintenance is medium. That's a problem against the uh, ground-bound facade greening because uh, inside of these containers is also an automatic irrigation system. This has to be checked. Uh, via the maintenance. So this is why it's a bit higher. Here's another example of this uh, kind of solution. Uh, as you can see here, directly installed on the balconies with a container and climbing it and some climbers directly. And as you can see here also, there are some solar energy on the balconies on top as well. If you look on the building, uh, on, on the roof there on, on the bottom right there you can see also a solar green roof. So a lot of usage between solar usage and greenery. 
And you can install this type of uh, horizontal lines also on facades with a lot of uh, windows. So this is possible there as well. Um, you can also combine it there. Just to give you an example that this is also possible. And the last system I want to show you are this typical so-called living wall systems. Uh, we in Germany call it wall-bound vertical usage. Um, so vegetation is perennials and small shrubs. It's a pretty complicated system. This is why it's also really expensive. It goes up to 1,500 euros per square meter. Um, but the advantage you have or big effect you have with this uh, kind of solution is that you have a direct um, greenery on your facade. Yeah, especially when it's uh, pre-cultivated, um, then you have the greenery after a few days or a few weeks, at least a few months with uh, ground bound greenery with climbers, you don't have this. So you have to wait then a few years to have it green. You don't have this with this kind of solution. But maintenance is uh, re really high for this example here. This needs maintenance four to five uh, times a year. So um, this has to be clear. Uh, you can have uh, really easy systems like this one. If you just uh, want to have it for your own, then you can use this. And please make sure to uh, always plan this type of uh, facade greening system from the beginning of the construction of the building. Um, you also install it on already existing buildings, but the planning is much more complicated, uh, complicated than. And what's also really nice uh, that you can combine this kind of solutions also in the industry sector, especially in on the countryside. Uh, I guess it's in your country the same. When you're uh, driving on the highway, you see a lot of these bigger industry buildings. So why not green them? That's possible with this kind of solutions. That's it for the green facades. And uh, to end my presentation, I just want to give you a short overlook on what's possible uh, in the combination with ideal city solutions. Uh, you can start with some smaller beehives, for example. You can put on uh, extensive green roofs, for example, because extensive green roofs are not open for the public. So um, um, the bees can produce honey there pretty easy or you can use uh, berry bushes on, on intensive green roofs, for example. And with these berries, uh, you can make some marmalade. Uh, you can see it here, it's real roof, green roof marmalade, which were made here. Um, this picture just should show you what's possible with a uh, typical green roof system. So you can grow a lot of different crops there. Um, a lot of things are possible in the private sector. Maybe you just want to have a small uh, area where you want to grow your own crops. That's, this can be worked out. Or when it comes to vertical farming, there are also some um, systems in the market which are directly working on this topic. Here an example with uh, some strawberries in a private garden or in Munich is this beautiful building where you have some also private gardens. So there are seven or six private gardens on top of this building. And uh, you can see here raised beds, uh, greenhouses on top, or even higher uh, trees, which can be planted there. So a lot of things are possible. And in Rotterdam, um, so that's not Germany, uh, because in Germany we don't have this bigger size here of an of a typical urban farming roof. Uh, but in, Doc, uh, in Rotterdam, we have the Duck Acker. It's, uh, um, I think it's open for the public as well. So please make sure to have a look on it. I will be in Rotterdam in, in summer this year and I will definitely, definitely will have a look. These pictures here are from my colleague. He was there a few years ago. So I hope when I, I will be there, it will look the same. So it's a really beautiful example when it comes to uh, diversity solutions on buildings. 
Um, we have something similar in Unix. Um, that's uh, this building, but this is more for education, environmental education for the children in in the cities to give them more and and look on on environmental factors. Uh, you can find uh, some race beds there. You can find some beehives there and uh, some other parts of uh, urban farming. And what is special for this uh, green roof is also that there are living some sheep up there. So these are living uh, the whole year uh, on the green roof. Uh, so you can see with this uh, what, what all is possible up there. And uh, here this is some uh, special solution as well. When you want to combine uh, in supermarket with, with some green uh, greenhouses on top and um, this is a pilot project with, which is located in uh, in the city of Wiesbaden which is close to the city of Frankfurt um, it's by the supermarket called Rewe I guess it's maybe also known in your country it's really big in Germany and as you can see here so the green roofs on top they want to produce some products and sell it later in the in the supermarket itself so that you have a local food production and also short transport ways and here when we were there they already produced some vessel you can see here on the bottom right and they sell it in the supermarket down left um, and they want also they, they want to produce also uh, some fish but uh, the fish wasn't there when we were there, so hopefully now it's uh, it's the case they that they also produce fish there. Okay, that's it from my side for now. Uh, yeah, if you want to know much more on building greening, this was just a short insight in this uh, in this topic. Um, then please check out our website. Uh, we have also an English website. Not that much information, but maybe you will find something. Or make sure to look on our social media, of course. We have a newsletter, which is free. We have a lot of uh, free brochures, which can be downloaded on our website. Uh, just if you want to know more on this topic. And of course, please check out also the EDISITNET website uh, when it comes to Edible City Solution. And within the EDISITNET uh, project, we also want to develop and technical information especially on building integrated farm and crop cultivation. It's not yet finished, but uh, maybe in the upcoming months we can present it to you then. This was it from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you for the intention. And yeah, maybe also with your help, we will have uh, a few more green buildings in the upcoming future in Europe. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Felix, for this super interesting presentation. You explained a lot of things. I think for the students it will be very interesting because next week they have to develop some projects in Girona. So maybe they, they can design some green roofs or, or green facades. Um, you are, I think the students are, you can check in the web page because they, they are one of the main experts in Europe in fact, in green facades and green roofs. And I don't know if I have two questions, but maybe some students have question first, please. Uh, yeah. I have one more question. Yes, Paula, come on, yes. Yeah. I just wanted to know if there's some legislation about which kind of plants can be put on um, the roofs because if there's if the main goal is to improve biodiversity and some exotic plants are planted there maybe some of them can be invasive so the biodiversity won't increase it will decrease in fact so i just wanted to know if there's some legislation which regulate which kind of species can be put on the roofs Yes, we have for, for different systems, we have uh, different plant lists which can be used. Um, so it depends a lot on the system you're using. And uh, to increase the biodiversity, of course, they are beautiful and uh, create plant lists on, on biodiversity green roofs, for example. Um, so in Germany, we have the 
we have guidelines for that. Um, and there are also uh, some, some, some plant lists uh, involved. Thank you so much. So more questions. See, good morning. Hey, Jasmine. Um, I have a question about uh, green roofs and another about the green facets. So I wanted to know, uh, does the height of the buildings has an influence or some effect on the green roof? The like height, the um, especially when it comes to the wind. Then uh, you have to you have to look if you want if you need some barriers or special products to, to, that you can hold the this, uh, the, the the green roof system on top of the building. What is the main influence? We have uh, our highest uh, green roof we have in Germany is uh, is on the Commerzbank Tower, uh, which is in Frankfurt. It's at around 150 meters, so that's possible as well. But uh, the wind uh, has to be cleared. Okay, and my second question was, um, what is the more sustainable watering system for um, green facets, like making green facets? Watering system. So normally you you yeah for green facades, uh, first of all for bound uh, for, for ground bound facade uh, greening, there you don't need any irrigation. That's a that's yeah. a good part. So you, the, the rainwater is enough for that. Uh, and for wall-bound facade greening, um, there are some special um, um, irrigation techniques which comes with the with the system itself. So there can't be uh, said that there is uh, that one or the other system is better because uh, all one system in the, in uh, in one. So the irrigation is included in the green facade system. But it's often used with drip lines, you know? And okay. uh, what uh, one project is working on to use uh, the overflowing rainwater from a green roof uh, to, to save it in a cistern and to use this uh, overflowing rainwater for the irrigation of the green facade. So, um, so that you have a directly so direct circle of the rainwater rainwater usage. Okay, thank you. Any more question or comment? Yes, can I speak? Yes. Okay, Henda. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, as I am an architect, I want to know, I would like to know um, the cost difference between the green uh, roofs and the classic roofs, for example. And so, and, and, and roof without any, any greenery. Can you hear me? Uh, one? I think uh, including the greenery, all included. So this depends a lot. Um, the cost depends a lot on the systems you are using. Uh, it starts with uh, some some cheap systems, which are only cost 30 euros per square meter. These are the typical extensive mm -hmm. green roofs. Uh, but if you want to go higher and you want to have your rooftop garden, then it can go up to 400, 500 or 600 euros per square meter. Um, always depends on what you want to have. So, and mm -hmm. of course, an un roof uh, don't cost anything because it's ungreened and uh, so then you have the green roof system on top of it and this one costs extra of course because one, want, yeah. because one of um, nowadays challenge is to introduce urban agriculture in uh, using the, um, uh, the roofs not to contribute to the food security and to enhance the cities so I think it's it's not. Um, I, I want to ask about the f feasibility of uh, of using roofs to uh, to um, use the roof for urban agriculture. So the costs, um, all those things. The costs which are 
for the urban farming roof itself, also for, for, for the system itself, uh, it's not that high. So it's 50 to 60 US per square meter. But uh, there are other costs because of the transportation of all the uh, all the stuff or uh, you need um, maybe extra systems. And I can't tell you how much this is. Maybe you need a um, connection then. But for the system itself, it's not that high. It's 25 centimeters in high. So it's around 50 to 60 euros per square meter. Uh, and uh, in you, are, you are interested in this, in the LicitNet project webpage, there are a lot, a lot, a lot of info because the project is especially for uh, food growth, edible, no city solutions, yeah. I think uh, there were a hand raise, no? Some more questions? I had a question, Felix, is when, when you, you are talking about these uh, green roofs, you are talking about the reservoirs, the capacity of the reservoirs, and what are you doing with this water? Normally, do you uh, use for irrigation or no? A few of, of the water is, uh, a bit of the water is of course for evaporation. And okay. then you, depends on the on the city, if they, uh, if they want to do something, you can use it for, for toilets, for example. Um, you can use it also for, as I already said, for the irrigation from, from other systems, you can save it in a cistern. Um, or for the irrigation of the of the green roof itself. So we are trying to to tell the uh, the cities that they can do much more with the with the water they can hold back. But it's not that easy yet. It's not that easier, no. <laughs> yes, I think here in the Mediterranean, uh, at least here in Barcelona. I think it, it maybe is much difficult because we have a lot, a lot of rain no? in some months and then we don't have not so much rain. So maybe it's, it's maybe more difficult or not. What do you think? Um, so, of course, then it could be difficult and you maybe have to irrigate uh, the, the green roof from time to time. I mean, uh, for extensive green roofs, uh, 